This video is aimed at eliminating some early mistakes that new tanks make and some bad habits that even experienced players keep for years. We'll go over everything from how to do the correct pull to the right mindset. To get started, make sure you've completed the Hall of the Novice under the duty section in your main menu. This will teach you about tanking fundamentals. You don't need me to tell you to activate your tank stance or not to stand in AOEs. Now before we move on to practical tips, let's make sure we go into this with the right mindset. I see new players in two extremes. Either you're terrified of tanking, maybe because you feel like you'll let your party down or because you can practically feel your healer's hateful stare on your back, or you're on the opposite end of the spectrum and you think you're the most important member of your party, far surpassing anyone in responsibility. Neither is the right mindset. As a tank, you have the same amount of responsibility as everyone else. Not more, not less. If a DPS stands in an AoE, it's just as bad as when a tank stands in one. Just because you do the pulse doesn't mean that you cause the wipes. You stand and fall as a party, sharing equal responsibility and because of that whether you go in as tank, DPS or healer shouldn't matter. Accepting that and relaxing a little bit is the first step to being a good tank in my experience. Let's move on to some more practical tips. Before you queue for anything, you should make sure that your gear is up to date. Other roles don't struggle as much as tanks when it comes to lack of gear. If a DPS has bad gear, the duty will just progress slower. If a healer has bad gear, then they will just have to spend more time healing rather than DPSing, so the duty will go slower. But if a tank has bad gear, they will more than likely turn into a Dragoon sooner rather than later and kiss the floor. Now, you don't need to go above and beyond, just make sure your gear pieces aren't more than 10 levels behind. If they are, you can find level appropriate vendors in all capital cities, and you're able to use tombstones of poetics to acquire 50, 60, 70, and 80 gear in Modona, Idleshire, Vargas Reach, and in Yolmo. With that out of the way, let's get into our first duty. When starting off, it can be tempting to prove that you have the biggest axe out of everyone in your group and immediately start pulling big. Or maybe you feel like you need to pull big because others will be disappointed by small pulls. However, pulling big may not be the smartest idea. Consider the level of the duty. Do your party members even have AOE abilities on their jobs at the level you're at? And if yes, are they really that strong? In most low level duties, it's actually better to pull small and allow your healer to help DPSing instead of pulling big and forcing them to spam heals on you while your two DPS are busy hitting single target spells during a huge pull. Consider also the experience level of your group. Do you have new players with you? Is your healer inexperienced? Then for the love of God, just start slow. Ease your party into it, slowly start pulling more if you feel like it's beneficial. As tank, you're kind of the pace setter. You decide how fast to go, and always being on turbo mode is not the answer. As you play tank more, you'll slowly get better at predicting incoming damage and using your abilities at the right time. You'll have more experience with different kinds of healers, different jobs in your party, and you'll know when to start pulling more. That's when you want to start testing your limits. Don't be scared to pull big, but don't make it your default. Speaking of pulling, let's talk about that. There's a certain art to being good at pulling. Pulling in this context just means taking the aggro, and there are multiple ways of doing it. Every tank automatically generates enmity through regular attacks whenever the tank stance is on, but you also have other abilities that can generate it. Those two abilities are Provoke and your ranged ability. Provoke is generally used much more rarely than people think. For the most part, you'll want to use it during tank swaps or to catch runaway enemies that you lost enmity on. For all other purposes, using your ranged ability is better. Provoke is never used for pulling. For bosses, you'll want to use your ranged ability to land the first hit, ideally ever so slightly before everyone else in the party, just to avoid other party members having aggro even for a short moment. Because often during that time, bosses will already land the first hit. When pulling, the goal is to get the boss to run towards you. This has two benefits. First of all, it lets you pre-position the boss in the room probably in a central location. Secondly, it closes the distance between the boss and your melee DPS party members, effectively allowing them to hit the boss faster. I would recommend you head to Summerford to practice the optimal pull. Get the start timer ready, which you can find under party in the main menu, and then try to hit your ranged ability the second the start text appears on screen. 
really try and get the timing just right. Nailing the pull is an underappreciated aspect of tanking, and getting this right will get you bonus points with pretty much anyone you'll play with. It's a fundamental that you'll need every single time you start a fight, and being as consistent as possible with it is incredibly important. Pulling packs of enemies in dungeons works a little bit differently. Ideally, you'll want to grab the aggro of multiple enemies at once by using an AoE ability after running right in the middle of them. Sometimes the spacing between enemies is too big to achieve that. In that case, run through the pack and let them close in on you before using your ability. Catch any stragglers with your ranged ability or provoke. When pulling big, keep running while going through the pack. This way you can avoid a lot of auto attacks because the enemies keep having to chase you. Don't worry about losing a few enemies here and there as long as the majority of them is still following you. Dungeon mobs will rarely kill your party members quickly and they can easily tank a few hits until the pull is done. Just do your best to catch as many enemies as possible. Another reason to not stand still if you plan on pulling more is that your party might start using ground targeted abilities like Doton or Earthly Star if they feel like you've come to a stop. To avoid that, you can communicate to them through your movement that you're not done yet. When doing big pulls like that, remember to use sprint. A great tip is also to use the ability before entering combat, not after. That's because sprint will last for 20 seconds when activated out of combat, but only for 10 seconds when activated in combat. Once you've successfully pulled, it's time to get the positioning of enemies right. The great thing about being a tank is that you have complete control over this. Being good at positioning bosses or packs of mobs can effectively teach your team mechanics. Stopping in a bad position, conversely, can screw everyone by placing your party in the middle of mechanics. For starters, you should immediately point mobs or the boss away from your teammates. That's to avoid cleaves that many enemies will do, meaning they will damage in a cone in front of themselves. The other reason for it is that some jobs have so-called positionals, meaning they have to hit the enemy from a specific side, such as the back, to get the full effect of their ability. That's why you will also want to keep the enemy standing as still as possible. Keep them pointing the same direction and only move them if absolutely necessary. By default, most parties will assume that you point the boss to the north. And whenever he's done doing mechanics, jumping around the platform, it's a good idea to pull him back into position facing north again. This also helps players deal with mechanics around them because they'll generally happen in the same locations. Whereas if you're always pointing a different direction, then the orientation of the mechanics happening might be different and they'll have to get used to it. When getting targeted by AoEs, always try to move back to your old position before dodging in order to avoid the enemy from moving at all. A lot of the time, they'll get locked into position when casting an ability, and if you manage to move back in time, they'll keep pointing in the same direction they were before, which will further make sure that your allies don't screw up their positional by the boss randomly snapping back to you in a different direction. If you don't want to move back into position after the AoE, at least do that consistently, so your melee DPS know what to expect from you. Something else to look out for is making sure that the sides of the boss are accessible by everyone. If he stood next to a wall or next to an AOE marker, the other players won't be able to hit their positionals, losing your team DPS through your bad choice of positioning. Also, when pulling big packs, your goal is to group packs in as small of a space as possible to allow your allies to hit their AOE abilities without maxing their range. To achieve this, once you have aggro, keep running some distance away from the enemies. Not too far, like a few meters, because that will group them up more neatly in a smaller overall space. Because as they're running, they're all targeting the position right in front of you. Sometimes there will be ranged enemies that you can't pull this way, because instead of following you, they will start to auto attack you from range. In that case, use what is called breaking line of sight, or LOS for short. Move around a corner or an object that blocks the target's vision to you, forcing them to move to that corner. This allows you to group them up like you do with all other enemies. Be really careful though, because this might break line of sight to your healer as well. If they are in the process of casting an ability on you, let them finish. Make sure you have plenty of HP before pulling the stun as well, because your healer is not going to be able to target you for a few seconds unless they're pre-positioned for it. An inexperienced healer might even just lose track of you completely if they lack awareness to see you run around the corner. So weigh the benefits against the cost in this case. 
To avoid a disaster, run back around the corner once the ranged enemies have grouped up. Lastly, you want to make sure that your enemies are positioned inside your team's ground targeted AoEs and that you don't pull anything outside of those. Examples of ground targeted abilities are Ninja's Doton, Astrologian's Earthly Star or Dark Knight's Salted Earth. Generally, if you see a mark on the ground and you don't know what it does, you should try and figure it out to become a better player. After the pull is done, you move on to defeating the enemies. And during that, you'll use what is called mitigation. Those are your defensive abilities. Mitigating incoming damage well is a tank's bread and butter. To successfully mitigate, you need to know what's worth mitigating and what tools you have available to you. To learn both, you need experience as a player and you need to test your limits a little bit. It's not always as simple as just mitigating heavy hitting abilities. For starters, you should never use all of your mitigation at once. The key to surviving and increasing your party's overall damage is spacing out your mitigation over a longer period of time. Mitigation abilities have diminishing returns. If you stack two abilities that mitigate 10% of damage, then the first ability will mitigate the full value, but the second ability will only mitigate 10% of the new damage value after the previous mitigation was calculated. For example, if the boss lands a hit for 10,000 damage and you mitigate the first hit for 10%, the ability mitigates a total of 1,000 damage. The second 10% mitigation ability will only mitigate 900 damage. So ideally, you'll want to use the abilities in succession and not lay it. Of course, unless not layering, the abilities will just get you killed. So take a look at your job's kit and figure out the best scenario for each ability. If you're unsure, try them in various situations. Get a feel for how they do, how long they take to recharge and so on. Let's take a look at Tank's role actions used for mitigation. Rampart, Reprisal and Arm's Length. Rampart is a 20% mitigation for 20 seconds making it excellent for mitigating medium hits for a long period of time. On a 90 second cooldown, this will be up for almost every dungeon pull, so make sure you use it. During boss fights, use it during longer periods of heavy damage, taking advantage of its duration. Reprisal is a little bit different. The ability will reduce damage of enemies around you, making it a great tool to use whenever the boss will hit your allies with raid-wide damage. Arms Length is a great mitigation tool to use during big pulls, because it will affect enemies who hit you with slow, which will reduce their attack and cast times. This is effectively equal to a 20% mitigation for 15 seconds, making arm's length an invaluable tool during big dungeon pulls. During boss fights, it's usually better to hold on to it for the knockback mitigating effect. But as the number of enemies increases, the value goes up as well. Other defensive tank abilities are job specific and covering them now would go beyond the scope of this video. If there's one big mistake to avoid, it's believing that mitigation is somehow a tool for when things have gone bad. Mitigation is supposed to stop you from taking dangerous damage in the first place and it should be used liberally but effectively. Don't save it for emergencies. Now that we have this out of the way, let's move on to tanking raids and trials, which will require you to work with another tank. Parties generally assign a main tank and an off tank. In practice, however, a lot of current fights force tanks to swap aggro between them throughout the fight, basically reducing the main tank down to who does the first pull. As the off tank, you're no less important and in fact, you probably even have the more difficult of the two jobs. While the main tank just has to keep the aggro, position the boss and deal with mitigation, you have to constantly be aware of multiple things. First of all, you need to keep track of any ads that enter the arena that you have to pull away. You're keeping an eye on the main tank, making sure that you're ready to grab aggro should they go down. To do so, you can generate aggro when the main tank has the boss safely under control. Wait until some way into the fight and then activate your tank stance, safe in the knowledge that the other tank is ahead of you in enmity. If the main tank dies, you're now automatically going to get the boss aggro. If you hadn't already generated some enmity, the aggro would go to the highest damage DPS in your group instead, potentially killing them if they were already low, which is very likely if the tank went down. If your aggro gets too high, you can always simply turn the tank stance off again. The last thing that you want is the boss spinning around on the spot because you took aggro. Another way of controlling aggro is the roll action shirk, which allows you to divert enmity to another party member. To use this, you have to click on whoever should receive enmity. However, in practice, you're only ever going to shirk the other tank, unless there's a ninja that you hate specifically. 
That's why I generally tend to make the usage of shirt easier for me by using a macro. Here's the macro that I use it. Feel free to use it as well. While we're talking about shirk already, let's speak about tank swaps, which is one of the uses for the ability. A tank swap is forced in some fights, usually because a boss will hit the targeted person twice, the first hit applying a debuff, and the second hit killing them if said debuff is active. This is when the off tank should activate their tank stance, if they haven't done so already, and then use provoke. This will immediately place them on top of the boss's enmity list, making them the new target for the second hit. To get the timing right, you need to understand the following. When the boss casts an ability, the target for that ability is already locked in. You casting Provoke during the cast won't change the fact that the other tank is soaking the first hit. However, you will receive the second hit immediately afterwards. So generally, as long as you Provoke at any point during the boss cast, you'll be fine. Afterwards, you assume the role of main tank until the next forced tank swap or until you decide to give aggro back to the other tank. As main tank, soaking a tank buster, you should first of all deactivate your tank stance. Secondly, you should use Shirk to divert the enmity back to the other tank, making the swap smoother. Don't listen to anyone preaching about not using Shirk during tank swaps because it's unnecessary somehow. Technically, you won't need it if everything goes right because using Provoke will place the person grabbing aggro from you on top of the enmity list. But in practice, it's a safety net and the other uses for Shirk are limited at best, so you might as well use it for its obviously intended purpose. Other than that, being a good tank partner also means not fighting for enmity, as petty as that sounds. Some other tanks you'll meet will have main character syndrome, meaning they always have to be the main tank. They'll generally try and work against you rather than with you and just give you a hard time. In those cases, I will leave them to it and just play as off tank, which is often the more demanding job anyways. Fighting over aggro is just petty, and after playing tank for such a long time, I'm just tired of even getting remotely upset over it. Well, that was quite the video, wasn't it? I sure hope I was able to help you getting started as a tank. It's, for me, the most fulfilling role, and I always love seeing new people try their hand at it, so don't be afraid to give it a shot, and remember to take things at your own pace. Don't let anyone pressure you into big polls or things you're not comfortable with yet. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Also, I've made a bunch of guides on tanks that go into more detail on specific actions, should you need help figuring out your kit. Some of them will be shown on screen right now. If this video helped you out, please leave a like so other people can find it too. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.